In this video, I'm covering seven of the biggest mistakes all Apex players make. Some of you will be making all seven of these mistakes, while others of you may only hit on a few of them. Regardless of which player you are, you're going to want to listen to all seven because nobody else is giving you this information and telling you how to correct it. Some of you may wonder, how do I know these are the biggest mistakes? Well, I've done over 300 Apex coaching lessons, and this is an Apex Legends masterclass. So let's get into it. The first mistake players make is they don't pay attention to when the ring is closing and where it's pulling towards. You may be thinking that this is a pretty basic concept considering Apex is a battle royale game, but rotating is a concept that gets often overlooked. Make sure to pay attention to the ring timer slightly below the minimap. This will obviously tell you when the ring is closing, but also which ring is about to happen next. Late rotating is almost like a ripple effect in the course of your game. It can have all sorts of consequences. I mean, think about it. If you rotate late and barely make it into the next zone, it's going to be much more difficult to rotate into the following one after that. Same thing can happen with loot. If a team is holding you out on the edge of zone, you are forced to use resources that could be used later in the game. Ideally, you will want to rotate before the ring is closing, giving yourself ample time to find somewhere in the next zone to position yourself. Rotating isn't all about when you do it either though. Make sure you take the correct paths within the map. Ask yourself questions such as, does this route have enough cover along the way? Is there some oppressive high ground where a team can look down on us? Does this rotation have an option to go a different route if I'm being held out? Considerations such as these will become much more second nature as you play more and understand the maps more. But overall, this is what will lead you to more success. Mistake number two is all about the heel wheel. I can confidently say this is something that affects every player at one time or another. Now for those that use keybinds on PC, this might not apply to you as much, but for the vast majority of everyone else, this one is for you. Constantly, I see players that I coach fail to take advantage of the heel wheel. The heel wheel is used throughout the game, but often in the midst of a fight, and it's important that you know which item it is on. The biggest tip I have for you is to leave the input on shields. Batteries first if you have them, but if you don't have them, make sure it's on shield cells. Your armor obviously gets hit before anything else in Apex, so you need to not waste any time when you take that initial damage. Just press the button and you start shielding. For example, if I'm about to engage in a fight, I will select a shield cell so that I don't have to bring up the menu in the middle of a fight. Saving those extra moments can add up and give you that vital time that you need to be able to get that heal off. Now, for bigger versus smaller heals, the bigger shield or bigger health item should always take precedent over the smaller one. Select the battery over the shield cell if you know you're about to go into a fight. If you take that damage in that close range fight, you just pop the battery. If you only have one battery and they're not pushing, then I would elect to slow heal. I wanna save those big heals for when I absolutely need them. As I've said before, time is extremely valuable during these engagements in Apex. The main reason this is such a huge mistake players make is that Apex spawns you in with two cells and two syringes, but the heal wheel is naturally left on the health, which is kind of backwards. Unless you're in the storm, your health will get hit second. So you need to manually change it to cells right away. And then if you find batteries, put it on that. Being mindful of the heal wheel also helps you be aware game to game as to what shields and health you do or don't have. Now for mistake number three, I'm gonna dive into the ranked mode briefly. Look, it's no secret that ranked has changed drastically in season 13, and you need to adapt to it. Otherwise, you're just not gonna see success. No longer can you kill five people with 15 teams left and gain RP. Kills are worth much less in the beginning of the match, which means they are not necessarily a priority. Your priority at the beginning of the ranked match is to get looted up and gain a position that will give you an advantage in the following rings. If you want to maximize the RP gained for that play session, go for placement in your matches. Kills will come naturally towards the end of the match or throughout them, because if you're in the right position to win the game, it's inevitable you'll run into people. It's really not worth stressing over kill points, especially with the addition of Team KP. Rank this season is about weighing your options, more so than any other previous season. So for example, if you have a good position in zone and there are 7 teams left, you must consider, do I go for the team that is moving into my portion of the map or do I maintain my spot? Questions like these are what you should be asking yourself and your team, along with taking into account the current zone, the amount of teams left, and your team's current KP count. If you take one thing away from this mistake, make it this. Positioning is the best way to gain RP in ranked this season. Do not throw your games trying to get early KP because it's not mandatory. Early KP is fine if you have the right opportunities, like you're forced to 50-50 off drop and you're confident in taking that fight, or there's some easy third party along your rotation. But once you get that KP, you must focus on getting to endgame. There's no need to fight more than really twice in a ranked match. 
players overcomplicate this and tend to look for multiple fights just because they spot an enemy. You really just want to focus on taking one to maybe two fights, but ultimately trying to win the game. That will net you the most ranked points this season. If you guys appreciate all the work that goes into making these videos and want to further support me and the channel, consider trying out YouTube's newest feature, Super Thanks. It allows for you to send a tip through a customized and highlighted comment below. It's by no means necessary though, and I appreciate all of your support regardless. All right, mistake number four, free looking. Most would think this is common sense, but to my surprise, it, it really isn't. For those of you who may be new to Apex or are just not taking advantage of this feature, please start using it. Free looking is extremely important in Apex and it provides so much information game to game. It allows for you to see how many teams are coming with you while landing, but not only who is coming with you, but where exactly. This should help you gauge a solid landing if you are contesting a team. You obviously don't want to land for a building that you think is free only for a three-man team to land right on top of you and either punch you out or beat you to where all of the loot spawns. You also want a free look to know how many teams are landing near you in the neighboring POIs. See, if you land uncontested, you want to know where the next closest team is, because as you progress in Apex, and especially in Ranked, teams use this to know where to look for easy fights. Hold left trigger or right click to get a 360 aerial view as you're dropping. Maintain your speed and trajectory to where you are planning on landing and study your surroundings. If you need to change up where you're landing exactly as a result of what you see when free looking, then do it. This is what I call a reactive drop. But using this information is vital and even more important in Ranked. Utilize this information and communicate it to your teammates to judge where you should land at a POI or if you should land at that POI at all. Never blindly drop into a match and just hope for the best as you land. It's incredibly easy for a lot of things to go wrong if you do that. Now let's get into fighting. Mistake number five is all about the cover that you will come across in your games. Be sure to use it basically at all times. This one also may seem very obvious, but I constantly see people using this in the wrong manner or not at all. There are a few concepts I wanna speak on. The first one is something I like to call the 50-50 rule. Now you may be familiar with this rule, but I want to elaborate on it a bit further. The premise is focused on half of your screen or 50% of it should be covered while the other 50% is looking or shooting at whatever it may be. It's okay for sometimes that cover to only be about 20 or 30%, while other engagements may require it to be higher than 50%. The 50-50 rule is just a baseline, and you will have to use your game sense to know when to peek all the way, or not at all. But this is a helpful rule to be following. Cover in Apex is dynamic, meaning you can be using small things such as rocks, boxes, or random architecture throughout the map, but always be looking at your surroundings to find that available cover to use. Another tip that goes along with the 50-50 that you should understand is called line of sight, or also known as LOS. LOS is exactly what you think it is. Do you or the enemy have line of sight on one another? Utilizing LOS is extremely useful if you are trying to deal or evade damage. I'm always assessing LOS for my opponents and my teammates, and this will generally require me not to only think about one opponent, but all three. If you guys are not using cover adequately or at all, then you are putting yourself at such a huge disadvantage every single time you take a fight, and you'll ultimately wind up being a liability for your teammates. This next mistake is one that we all do at one time or another. What is it you may be wondering? Miscommunication. More specifically, calling someone one shot, and they are definitely not one shot. Now everyone's done this, including me, but it's important that we try to minimize the amount of times that we say it when it's not true. Miscommunication in general can have detrimental consequences on the outcomes of our games. Look, I get it. You did 150 damage to someone and you called it their one shot to get your team to push them or to react to them as fast as possible. But you have to be mindful of the potential consequences of that call out. Your teammates health, positioning, and the enemy's health and positioning are critical factors that could alter this situation and not in your favor. This issue arises mostly when someone on your team is low and the enemy is not actually one health. The goal of communicating in Apex is to provide accurate info to your teammates that they might not have themselves or to let them know what is going on from your perspective. Be sure that you are calming such as positions of enemies, health of enemies, what shields they have, how much damage you have done to them, and maybe what they are actively doing 
doing, such as rotating or hiding behind cover. Palms are one of the largest determining factors in the success of your team. If you guys can communicate properly and are all on the same page, then your chances of success are far higher than that of the average team in Apex. Also, be sure to be using the built-in pinging system, especially if you're solo queuing and you don't feel like talking to your teammates. Providing any available information to your team is a valuable resource, trust me. Mistake number seven coincides with the heal wheel that I mentioned in mistake number two. Now this isn't necessarily about what heals to use, but more so about when to use them. Consistently, I see people I coach and teammates in my games not healing, especially during moments of downtime. This one has a whole lot of nuance, but as a general rule of thumb, if no one is pressing you or right in your face and you have taken damage, start healing. Now, which heal you should be using is dependent on how much damage you took, how much time you think you have before the enemy arises, and what heals you currently have. Downtime in a fight exists everywhere, and it can be created if your team is shooting at the enemy. Try to balance out shooting between teammates so you guys can give each other time to heal while the other teammates are looking at the opponent. It's kind of like a tag team mentality, but you have to make sure to effectively use any extra time to your advantage. Putting space in between you and the enemy can give you more time to heal if that's something that is needed. The difference between 25 and 50 HP can often be the determining factor into you winning or losing that fight. Ultimately, fighting more and gaining this experience and understanding of when you can heal will come with time. But just don't forget the importance of healing. You usually have more time than you think you do. If you want to learn about six of my best tips for Season 13, well, I suggest you click on this video here. Thanks for watching. Peace.